Good God, episode 5 is up. This time, it's all about GPU Boost 3. It's built into the NVIDIA 1060-1070 GFX cards. It can't be changed or turned off. Its purpose is to protect the GFX card from being damaged. Depending on the model will depend on which items you can change. For example, the 1070 Max-Q voltage modifier is disabled. Calculate what each part can have by comparing it to what other parts are doing. It then adds a little default safety boost on top if required. I have split the monitoring into two and added two more things to monitor. Settings, monitoring, add GPU 1, no load limit and CPU usage. Graph columns, change to two. OBS settings, output, recording encoder, change to hardware, NVENC. And because that's set, we are now using the GPU's built-in encoder chip. This results in very low CPU and very low GPU usage. And in this case, keeps the temperatures nice and low. GPU 1, no load limit. What is it and why add this? Carry on from my GPU Boost 3 explanation. No load limit shows you if it's determined whether or not there is sufficient overall load to ramp up. Bit of a mind twist this one, as on means there's little to do, so calm down, calm down. And off means power up the engine, there's work to be done. So why add it now? It's a good indicator as to what's happening with your graphics application. For some strange reason for the 1070 Max-Q, guess the 1060 as well, the core voltage isn't displayed. Therefore to show you this I use another program called GPU-Z. And there's no need to download this as it's an information monitor. A lot of work goes behind the scenes for me to find information about these cards and I couldn't find the voltage range listed for the 1070 Max-Q. But using the GPU-Z, here are my findings. Graphics card is doing absolutely nothing. Standby if you like. When I was doing various benchmark tests, these are the results I got. GPU was low, but the onboard encoder was reasonable. I can't remember how I got the voltage this high, but it's unrealistic, so <laughs> don't expect to get it. So in my opinion, the effective range, therefore, is 0.6750 to 0.8310 volts. Why is it important to know, I hear you ask? Voltage curve. And that's in part number six. Yep, you guessed it. We're at the end of part five. And remember, show support, subscribe, I answer anybody's questions. Till next time, number six. Bye.